Hello, welcome to this lesson on vectors and scalars. This is a basic introduction, so if you've already met vectors and scalars, you may find this useful as revision. What we're going to talk about is what a scalar is, what a vector is, how to represent vectors geometrically, drawing arrows, and what we mean by the line of action of a vector. Here we've got a list of scalars on the left and a list of vectors on the right. Take a look at them. Can you spot what the difference is? What makes some things a scalar and other things vectors? Well, let me tell you if you didn't spot it or don't know. The lift, list on the left had mass, time, speed, power, distance. Now, these are all scalars. They all have a size which we refer to as the magnitude. For example, a mass could be 50 kilograms. We would say the magnitude of the mass is 50 kilograms. These quantities are usually represented by a number in a unit. For example, a distance might be 5 meters. That's 5, the number, multiplied by 1 meter. That's a unit. It's a number multiplied by the unit, 5 meters. But sometimes it's possible to have scalars that don't have a unit. For example, the tangent of an angle is a scalar, but it's got no units. So if these are scalars, what makes the other things vectors? Force, velocity, momentum, acceleration, displacement. If you don't recognize some of these, I'll be explaining what they mean shortly. All of these are vectors. They have a magnitude, a size. And as well as the magnitude, they have a direction in space. That means they point in a particular direction. Spatial direction would be a good way of saying it. They have a spatial direction. For example, a force. A force might be 50 newtons, but it's got a direction. It might be 50 newtons pushing you left, and that's different to a force of 50 newtons pushing you right. So all of these quantities, as well as the magnitude, they've got a direction, and the direction is very important. So we can come up with a couple of definitions if we want them. A scalar, a quantity with only a magnitude, but no spatial direction. A vector is a quantity with a magnitude and a spatial direction. You might want to note that a vector's magnitude is itself a scalar. For example, we could have a velocity of 100 miles an hour north. That's the magnitude of 100 miles an hour, and the direction is north, the way we're going. And the magnitude part, the 100 miles an hour, is a scalar. It's a speed, in fact. Let's go through some examples of each type of vector that we've talked about. There are other sorts of vectors, but we'll just focus on the ones in our list. A force, an example, might be 700 newtons downwards. Simple as that. The magnitude is 700 newtons. The direction is downwards. This complete set of information is the vector. Velocity, not to be confused with speed, which is a scalar. Velocity could be 200 meters per second, and the direction 10 degrees east of north. That's a compass bearing. So that whole set of information, the magnitude, which is the speed, and the direction, that whole set of information is a vector. It's the velocity vector. We often do problems in physics where we've got objects moving in a nice simple straight line, maybe to the left or right. When we do these problems, we often use what we call a sign convention. That means we take negative to mean to the left and positive to the right. It's a bit like the x-axis on a graph. To the right is positive x, to the left is negative x. So if we're using a sign convention, we could express a velocity like this. We could say the velocity is minus 5 meters a second. That means the speed is 5 meters a second. That's a magnitude of the velocity. And the minus sign tells us the direction. We know the thing is moving at that speed to the left. The minus gives us a direction. So that is a velocity, direction and magnitude. Let's take a look at momentum. I hope you've met momentum before, but if you haven't, let me summarize. Momentum of an object 
usually given the symbol P is simply its mass in kilograms times its velocity in meters per second. And the direction is important, velocity is a vector. Let's stick with the same sign convention we just mentioned. Negative values means left, positive means right. Take a 70 kilogram man running to the left at this speed, 10 meters per second. First of all, we can say the velocity is minus 10 meters per second. The minus tells us he's running to the left, and the 10 meters per second is the magnitude, the speed. The momentum P is m times v, 70 kilograms times minus 10 meters per second, giving us minus 700 kilogram meters per second. So the momentum has a negative value, means momentum is a vector, its direction is to the left same as velocity, with that magnitude. How about acceleration, a very common vector? Again, let's talk about motion in the straight line, but this time problems involving up and down motion, nice simple vertical motion. With these problems we often use a sign convention where we have negative meaning down and positive meaning up, a bit like how we label a y-axis. We could write acceleration is minus 9.8 meters per second squared, for example. This is a vector because we've got direction information. The magnitude is 9.8 meters per second squared, but the minus sign tells us a direction. It's downwards if we're using our sign convention. And some students think a negative acceleration means slowing down. Well, it doesn't. It can equate to slowing down in some cases, but the negative sign for an acceleration actually tells you the direction because it's a vector. This is a downwards acceleration. And if you want to know the direction, here's the way to work it out. An acceleration always has the same direction as the force producing it because F equals ma. Whatever the direction of F is, the acceleration has the same direction. If you have a, a freely falling object with no air resistance, the only force on it is its weight, pulling it downwards. Therefore, the acceleration, you can calculate from that equation, but the direction of the acceleration will be the same as the direction of the weight, downwards. So we use a negative sign using this sign convention. The force would be negative and the acceleration, therefore, also negative, downwards. Displacement you may have met before, if you haven't, all it means is a distance in a given direction, a, a change of position. For example, 2.7 metres is the length, but 2.7 metres to the right tells you how much you're going to move in and in what direction, and that information is called a displacement. We often want to represent a vector by a drawing, geometrically. And we use arrows to represent vectors. If we use an arrow, the length of the arrow, that's from the tip, which is a pointy bit, to the tail, the other end, the length corresponds to the magnitude of the vector. And the direction of the arrow corresponds to the direction of the vector, obviously. So here's an example. I've drawn an arrow pointing downwards and to the left, sort of. That represents the direction of the vector. It's a force vector. The size of this vector is 40 newtons. Now, if we're going to draw an arrow, we've got to choose a scale. So I've put the scale underneath here. I've said one centimeter equals should really be represents 10 newtons. One centimeter represents 10 newtons. I hope you see that if we want to represent a 40 newton arrow, sorry, 40 newton force, We've got to draw a line four centimeters long. The arrow must be four centimeters long because using this scale, one centimeter is 10 newtons, four centimeters will be 40 newtons. So we've got to draw an arrow four centimeters long and the direction is whatever the force's direction happens to be. So we've represented this vector with an arrow of a suitable length. Here's one for you to try. Suppose you've got a scale of one centimetre is 100 kilogram metres per second, and you've got an arrow someone's drawn, it's 3.1 centimetres long. First of all, 
Can you say what sort of vector it is? What type of vector? Is it velocity or force? Or what sort of vector is it? And what is the magnitude of the vector? Pause the video if you want to, to try and answer that for yourself. Well, it's a momentum vector. You can tell by the units. And 100 kilogram meters per second is one centimeter. The arrow is 3.1 centimeters long. You might have measured it with a ruler. So I hope you can see the magnitude of the vector is 3.1 times 100, which is 310 kilogram meters per second. Let's try it the other way around. Suppose you've got a force of 60 newtons and it acts to the right. You want to draw an arrow to represent it. What size and direction arrow should be drawn if you're using a scale of a centimeter is 5 newtons. Pause the video, try that for yourself. And first of all the arrow must point to the right because the force acts to the right, so we'll draw an arrow pointing right. It's 60 newtons, the magnitude of the force, and we've got a scale of 1 centimetre is 5 newtons. I hope you can see that what we've got to do is divide 60 by 5 and the arrow should be 12 centimetres long. You can check that by reversing the work if you want. It's 12 centimetres, each centimetre is 5 newtons, so 5 twelves is 60 newtons. It works. OK, you can double check your calculation that way. Now, sometimes the magnitude and direction of a vector are not enough to work out a problem. Here's an example. We've got a wooden beam balanced on a pivot, a seesaw arrangement. I hope you can see that we could apply a 5 newton downward force here and it would have a different effect to applying a 5 newton downward force here. It's the same force, 5 newtons, same direction downwards, but the effects are different depending on whereabouts the force is applied. And sometimes we need to take this into account. It depends on the type of problem. And there's a couple of concepts you need to know. We could talk about the point of application of the force. We may need to know the point of application. That's where the force is pressing against the wooden beam in this case. But more commonly, you'll hear the term line of action used. So all vectors have a line of action. And in this case, the line of action, I've drawn it in yellow. And it's simply the line along which the vector acts. In this case, it's the line along which that 5 Newton force acts. It's got to pass through that point. So the line has got to pass through that point and be in the same direction as the vector. In principle, the line is infinitely long. It can be extended indefinitely above or below. That's the line of action of a vector. OK. Before we finish, let me mention that, that the term vector can be used in other areas to mean other things. For example, in biology, a vector is something that can carry a disease from place to place. In quantum mechanics, a vector is a complicated mathematical quantity. But for our purposes, it's a simple concept used to represent things like forces and velocities. And in subsequent lessons we're going to learn how to multiply, add and subtract vectors so that we can use them to solve problems. So I hope you can learn how to do that. Thanks for watching.